Well, I know it's nowhere near as creepy as in the movie, but it's the best I could do. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage, welcome back to this year's Halloween Horror Mayhem. Today's pick is the brand new Canadian sci-fi mystery horror movie Come True. It had its premiere in August at the Fantasia Film Festival in Canada and I was very lucky to catch it at the Slash Film Festival here in Vienna. Unfortunately, I don't really know when it's coming out, but when it does, you should definitely give it a try. It was my first exposure to the Canadian filmmaker Anthony Scott Burns, but he seems to be a remarkable and multi-talented artist. He is listed as a film Maker, visual effects artist and musician on Wikipedia and all those three fields come together beautifully in Come True, which marks his second feature film. He didn't just direct and write the film after a story by Daniel Weissenberger, but he's also responsible for the cinematography, editing and I assume also the special effects. On top of that he also composed the music as his alter ego pilot priest, accompanied by music by the Canadian synth pop duo Electric Youth. Come True tackles a topic that has been subject of many, many movies, especially horror movies. And just a few days ago I reviewed another one that deals with it. Dreams. Or rather, nightmares. But its presentation, its vibe feels deeply unique and super intriguing. This movie seems to exist in its own mesmerizing realm. Our protagonist is the teenage runaway Sarah, played by Julia Sarah Stone. When a new sleep study offers her the chance of a nice and somewhat comfortable place to sleep at night, which is far better than the slide on a local playground, she takes the chance. It's one of those movies that depict a bunch of mysterious scientists doing some even more mysterious experiments. And the mystery of what exactly is going on in Come True is actually kept alive until the very end. But let's come back to the very beginning, because Come True is a movie that has the potential to suck you right in. Right from the very first shot we are slowly entering its peculiar world and atmosphere. Atmosphere. We get wrapped up in darkness and we start with this super slow tracking shot that's pulling us forward through some very nightmarish imagery of which we are barely able to make out all the shapes and forms. We are moving through dreamlike corridors, opening doors and ever closer to a menacing dark shadow figure of which only the eyes are these glowing white dots. And all of the beautiful camera work and the terrific effects are accompanied by this super dense musical score. When you have to describe Come True in just a few words, among them have to be dense soundscape and nightmarish dreamscape. All films should better be watched in total darkness, but this one has to be experienced that way. Seeing it on the big screen with the volume all up was terrific, but I think it could also work wonderfully alone at home in the middle of the night with nothing on but a TV and headphones. Back to the story for a second. As it turns out, the whole immersive opening tracking shot, as well as many others that follow, are depictions of Sarah's nightmares. And the scientists are of course entangled with dreams as well. Unfortunately, I don't know the movie's budget, but I'm pretty positive that this is a low budget film and that all its audiovisual flair and ingenuity can first and foremost be attributed to the talent and passion of its filmmakers. The production design is fantastic. It has this retro futuristic angle with its many old school displays trying to manifest a float images of our dreams, while we as the audience are trying to figure out what the images are really showing. And while the dreams or nightmare segments are brought to life in a really impressive and also quite unnerving kind of way, the film as a whole also moves in this dreamy, subdued way. As it progresses we fall into it deeper and deeper. Our eyes and ears are getting in tune with the dark images and horrifying and melancholic sounds and music. We are gliding through shadows, trying to figure out this puzzle and what it wants to say. Thankfully we have a very likable protagonist who is doing the same. Julia Sarah Stone is wonderful and she captures her character's frailty but also her toughness really well. And while the relationship that she develops with the scientist Jeremy, played by Landon Liborion, felt a bit weird for sure, I also couldn't help but feel endless happiness in one crucial moment that also features a beautiful song. I'm sure that this movie won't speak to everyone, but it worked really well for me. I honestly can't wait for its soundtrack to be released so that I can listen to it again and remember this beautifully dark time that I spent with Come True. 
Now I will say that it might overstay its welcome just a little bit. Its runtime of 105 minutes could have been streamlined a little bit I think. I'm also warning or maybe just preparing you for the end. Because the very very last shot might probably evoke a few shaking heads. My first reaction was also more negative because it felt as if it would take away from the film's surreal ambiguity in favor of a more tacky twist. But at least for me that assumption only lasted a few seconds because I actually find it rather beautiful and tragic. So in German I'd say, Come true ist ein betörend düster schauriges Fest für die Sinne. Ein langsamer Abstieg in die geheimnisvolle Welt der Albträume. I give Come true 8 out of 10. It's more like 7.7. .7, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Come True. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you can now also become a member of the channel and get exclusive rewards. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.